uh, I grew up in Newport News, Virginia, so right down the road. Um, and then uh, I went to college, and now I'm back in Williamsburg, Virginia. I'm a youth minister down the road at uh, Williamsburg. Or in, excuse me, you're all in Williamsburg. Down at uh, St. Bede. Uh, and so I don't need any of this is a lot. Um, I don't have any rhythm, so I can't play guitar or anything like that. So, um, Okay, well, uh, I wanted to start uh, by telling you a story. Uh, it's not about me. It's about, um, well, I guess a minute. But it's about my buddy. Uh, my buddy, my friend Joe is a real hipster. Uh, we were roommates together for a long time. And he, to, be, to be fair to him, he, he was always on the cutting edge of irony. He, was, he thought it was ironic before he, anyone else did. Um, that's a hipster joke, guys. Um, a anyways, so Joe was great. Um, he was a lot. He was really good to room with. He didn't do his dishes, but that was like really it. And uh, he was so hipster, in, in fact, that like his pants, like for a guy, were way too tight. He actually couldn't keep his phone in his front pocket because if he ever reached his hand in to grab his phone, he couldn't get it back out without letting go of the phone. Um, his pants were too tight. Uh, it was, and and so. Joe, as a hipster, there's only one way to listen to music if, if you're a real hipster, and that's on vinyl, which is a, a totally impractical technology. Um, I have a, an iPod that holds 80 gigs of music, which is roughly 7,000 times more than his vinyl. And it goes in anywhere, and it fits in your pocket, but he's like, no, this disc, that's... As big as your chest cavity, that's how you listen to music. And, I was, and it, he drove me nuts, man. He just different things that he would do, and he'd be like, "No, man, mustaches are cool." And I'd be like, "No, they're not. They're weird. You look like a creep." And and he'd be like, "No, no, no. There's only one way to listen to music, and it's on vinyl." And I and he drove me nuts. And I was like, "Do you see this? This is a, an iPhone. It does everything that vinyl does." Plus, it makes calls, and you can text, and you can tweet. And he was like, no, 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 but you can't listen to music on it. And so he drove me nuts, man. It, it, so I liked to, to pull pranks every once in a while. Um, Jim Halpert is probably my life hero. Um, the Office, nobody? Nobody, OK. <laughs> All right, that's cool. It's ending soon, probably because no, none of you are watching it. Um, anyways. And so I love to pull pranks. And, and on this vinyl record player that he has and he's super protective of, and it's his hipster lifeblood, is a setting. And the setting is really a lot of fun because you can speed stuff up or slow stuff down the way the, the record plays because it needs the needle and it spins at a certain rate and then it's pretty boring. But you can make this great prank and it's just to change it whenever he's not looking. And so his music is playing too fast or too slow and he doesn't know why for a second. It was really funny. The first time he ordered um, the new uh, Vampire Weekend album, he just got this new hipster CD or album and he was like, man, this is going to be so good, so good. And so he listened to the first two tracks. It was on double speed, but he had no idea. And he was like, man, they're so smart. They're so, they're so technical. Look how fast they're playing. And I was like, dude, I got you again. But I just got to, I got to tell you or you'll never know. Um, and, so, and, so it just, um, and so I just pulled this prank on him over and over and over again. And he was just like, well, you're going to break it. it doesn't, it's not supposed to sound like that. And... Um, that's how Joe talks. He's from Wisconsin. Um, and anyways, um, so I, I just was thinking about that the other day. And, and just like uh, kind of because what happened was I, I realized like, man, my life is going really, really fast right now. Like, I don't know what's going on. Uh, maybe some of you who are graduating are kind of feeling that way because this is your last chapel, right? Yeah, that's exactly what I was hoping we'd get. End of school. It's almost summertime. Woohoo. Um, Anyways, so this is your last chapel, like summer's coming up, like maybe you got exams, you're busy, you're stressed, and you feel like life is moving really, really fast, right? Does anyone feel like that? I don't need to show hands or anything, but maybe you do, or maybe you feel that way. And I was thinking about it, and it was like, man, like, I just need to make sure my record is playing at, at the right speed, because it, otherwise it doesn't make sense. Um, uh, f for example, um, maybe, maybe a little bit of poetry 
will, will help this morning. All right. When I was 13, I had my first love. There was nobody that could compare to my baby. No one could ever come between us. No one could ever come above. She had me going crazy. Oh, I was starstruck. She woke me up daily. Don't need no Starbucks. She makes my heart pound and skip a beat when, I'm, when I see her on the street and at school on the playground, but I really want to see her on the weekend. She knows she's got me dazing because she was so amazing, and now my heart is breaking, but I just keep on saying. Thank you. Snaps. That's awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> you are in on audience participation. Um, right, so, that, so that's the, the ludicrous uh, bars from uh, Justin Bieber's Baby, and, and, it's a, and that was about half time. I can do double time, but you have to like laugh at all my jokes for the rest of the thing. Are you guys good for that? All right, I'll do double time. Now I kind of wish I had that water. Um. <coughs> when I was 13, I had my first love. She had me going crazy. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hold on. When I was 13, I had my first love. She had me going crazy. Oh, shoot, I did it again. All right, let's, start, let's, let's think about it. Hold on. I can do it. When I was 13, I had my first love. She had me going crazy. Okay. When I was 13, I had my first love. She had me going crazy. Oh, shit. Jason, where's Jason? Jason. When I was 13, I had my first love. There's nobody that can compare to my baby. No one could ever come between us. No one could ever come above. She had me going crazy. Oh, my not. She, she had me starstruck. She had, woke me up daily. Don't need my Starbucks. She had me. She made my heart pound. It's giving people want to see her on the street, and it's cool on the playground, but I really want to see her on the weekend. She knows she got me dancing because she was so amazing, but now my heart is breaking, and she, now I just keep on saying, wow, it is too early for this. Um, sorry about that. I only had one cup of coffee, and I can't rap. Anyways, so, anyways, I, and so, and so, like, you, you see this, though, that, that there's way, way too slow, and it, and it doesn't make sense, and then there's way too fast, where I can't remember the words, and everything just seems out of, out of place, and, and so that, that's kind of what I wanted to think of, talk about tonight, or, or this morning, um, it, it, is how we can kind of reset our needle, make sure our life is playing on the right track, you know, and so, I kind of wanted to pick a verse um, that, that could talk to a little bit about that. And so I picked Corinthians 9, 24. It's one of my favorite verses because I, I was a cross-country runner. Do we have any cross-country runners in here? Nice. Just one? Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, and so this is the, the really awesome verse where St. Paul says, like, run as to win. And, and it, gets me, it gets me really excited. Um, and so... Uh, something about coming back to high school really awakened something in me. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. And that I forgot my textbook, but here my textbook is the Holy Bible, and I forgot it. But they have an app for that, so we're good. All right, a reading from 1 Corinthians. Do you not know that all... In a race, all the runners compete, but only one receives the prize. So run that may, you may attain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things, but they do to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable one. Well, I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air, but I pummel my body and subdue it, least after preaching to others, I myself, may be, I myself should be disqualified. The word of the Lord. Okay, and so... so Maybe you've heard this verse before, maybe you haven't, um, but it's one of my favorites because I consider myself an athlete, even though uh, the data shows otherwise. Um, and so 1 Corinthians starts, in, or excuse me, this verse, 1 Corinthians 9 starts with St. Paul asking this great question. He goes, am I not free? And I love that because first off, American, bleed red, white, and blue, and so I love freedom. And so, so does St. Paul, and he just says, I have my whole life in front of me. I can choose any way I want to live. I can live this way, I can live that way, but I, I can choose. And so, so then afterwards, he uses this sports metaphor, this really good sports metaphor. And um, it makes a lot of sense if, if you're an athlete or, or if you're a singer, if, you, if you're practicing. You know, like, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? You practice, you practice, you practice. Um, and so this is a verse that inspired me 
because I was a track runner, and so I was like, yeah, I'm going to run as to win. But there are other parts in there that, that come before running as to win. And the first one that I want to talk about is shadow boxing. Um, does, does anyone in here know what shadow boxing is? It's exactly what it sounds like. Um, it's, it's not really boxing. Um, it's kind of like punching the air is what is a good description of it. Um, I actually once met this guy. Um, I, went, I was going to the YMCA, and uh, I was going there, and the, there's this old guy there, and he, he um, in a past life, uh, he was a boxing trainer. Like, that's what he did. And so I really liked the movie Rocky, and so I was, obsessed, uh, I was vulnerable to this guy talking about, like, man, you could, you could be a really great boxer. And I was like, yeah, I could. I could go the distance. And, and so this guy was like, he had this perfect raspy voice for what you would want your boxing coach to sound like. And so he was like, dude, like, you got to get in the ring. You got to get in the ring. I was like, um, yeah, I'm kind of a lover, not a fighter. I've never been in a fight in my life or anything like this. And I, I'm kind of nervous. And he was like, no, no, no. You got the, you got the length for it. And I was like, uh, okay. And so he, he went, so they, they have like a punching bag. And he was like, here, let me, let me show you a couple things on the punching bag. And I was like, man, that could be good to know in case I ever do get into a fight. And I don't know. I, I, I was susceptible mostly because of the, you could be the champ. And so he's like, all right, strike. And I was like, here we go. And, and, uh, and so he was just like, man, that was, that was weak. And he's like, do you, do you even know how to throw a punch? I was like, no idea. This is totally new to me. This is, this is out of this world. And he was just like, come on, hit something. And I was like, woohoo. And, uh, and so he, so he really didn't, and so he's like, all right, just practice over here. Like, no, you don't even get to use the punching bag yet. Like that's, that's too advanced for you. Just like, just kind of swing in the air and just see, see what happens. And that, and for me, that was shadow boxing. Cause I was just like, man, this is so pointless. Like I'm not doing anything. And so I think this is kind of like what St. Paul was talking about, like his first way of, of living this life. Um, safe to say I never boxed again. It, it wasn't really my thing. Um, but the, the, this is the first way to kind of just go with the flow, not really have a purpose, not really be training for anything in particular. You don't really know what you're doing. Um, you're just kind of going with the flow, okay? And, and so th there's a ton of different things that, that this goes into. Like uh, you spend a lot of time on uh, your Netflix and you're just kind of just, all right, yeah, I, I can watch eight seasons of How I Met Your Mother in the next seven weeks. I can fit that all in, you know? Um, that's just an example, but there there are a lot of ways of just going with the flow and not really having those parameters or anything like that. Um, and so that that's that's number one, and it's just going with the flow. And there's times where people just you know you're going with the flow. You're like, yeah, I'll I'll do that, and it, and you get kind of carried away. Um, I think we're all good with that one. It's the easiest probably. All right, and the second one that St. Paul makes the point of, the, and he says, everyone has a goal. And this is true, right? Maybe it's to be the greatest singer. Maybe it's to get a gold medal in the Olympics. Maybe it's, um, I don't know, get into a good school, get a good job, all that stuff. And so everybody wants to achieve something, you know. Um, but my favorite example of this is, uh, does any, everyone know who Tom Brady is? Thomas Brady? Yes? Who is he? Football player, good. Patriots player, better. Quarterback, great. Does anyone know other things about him? Super Bowl, good. Three Super Bowls. I'm a Patriots fan. Um, anything, anything else about him? Model wife, good. Good, good for you. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he has a model wife. Um, that, that, that is what I was looking for. And then one other thing. Uh, money. Yeah, yeah, he's rich. Um, and so, so he's basically everything the world would want in, some, in, in an athlete to achieve, right? He's got, he's got three Super Bowl rings. He's the quarterback. He's got model good looks himself. He's married to a supermodel. He's got a lot of money, um, like a real lot. But but, but Tom Brady sat down one day, he was doing 60 Minutes because he was super famous, and he was going back to, like, the fifth Super Bowl or something. 
and and so he's just like, man, like the interviewer asks him, Tom, you, you've achieved everything you like in this life. Oh, he's also a scratch golfer too. He's good in like two sports. And um, he was like, oh, he's also drafted in uh, baseball, but he played football instead. And so he's like, you've, you've really achieved a lot, Tom. Like, and Tom goes, yeah, I've got three Super Bowl rings and I've got a lot of money and I've got all of this, but why doesn't that make me feel fulfilled? I, I, I just know there's more than this. There has to be more than this. And, and so I was thinking about that and I was like, man, that's, that's shocking. Uh, like, I have your jersey, man. Like, I, I thought you were supposed to have it all together and, and you've definitely achieved everything you ever wanted to. And he was like, but it, it, doesn't, it didn't fulfill him. It didn't make him, he wasn't fulfilled. He didn't have it. He wasn't made into who he wanted to be yet. And so everybody kind of has these goals. You know, maybe it's to be a CEO, to make X amount of dollars, to, you know, just be successful in life. We, we have this thing at, uh, where sometimes we ask the kids, like, what do you, what do you want in life? Try, trying to get to know them a little bit better. And if they don't have an answer, uh, and, and my brothers and sisters are the same way, I was probably the same way, they just go, yeah, I want to be successful. I was like, all right, what's that mean? I have no idea. I have no idea. And, and, and that's, we, we all have this. We, we want to be successful. And um, once I, uh, I was talking uh, with my grandfather, he's super wise. And he was a dentist, so he also liked to play golf, which is cool because I like to play golf. And so we were, we were golfing one day, and I was like, man, like, I should probably get some grandfatherly wisdom at this point. This seems like the right thing to do. Whoops. And, um, and, so, and so he goes, you know, Will, like, you can be all the successful you want. You can, you can achieve everything you want. You can make as much money as you want. But what, what's the end goal there? And he was like, you can retire early? And I was like, I don't know. That sounds nice. I like to golf, as evidenced by us golfing. And he, and he goes, yeah, you can re retire to have your remote control in your golf clubs. But that doesn't fulfill you in any, in any way. And he was like, trust me. I was like, oh, man, that's, that's really good grandfatherly advice, that there's more than just golf and television and that kind of success. Like, it doesn't matter how many inches are on, are on your flat screen. There's more to this life. And so let's go back to St. Paul. St. Paul is like, St. Paul calls this, like, his perishable crown, you know. Because will this, like, will that last one second after you're dead, you know. Like, will it, when you're buried, it doesn't really matter. Like, they bury your Super Bowl rings with you. You know, like, they don't, you can't take that stuff with you. And so, the, 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 there's this missing part. And so then the third, and probably I, I would propose to you that the most important is the imperishable crown that St. Paul is running for. And so that, um, any, any guesses on what that would be? Any guesses? It's, it's probably pretty obvious. Imperishable crown, lasts forever, it's really nice. Harps. Heaven, good, yes, thank you. Thanks for putting me out of my misery up here. Yeah, um, <laughs> heaven, I'm not, I'm not miserable, I'm having a good time, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, heaven is, heaven is the right answer. And so he heaven is, is paradise, and it's the crown that St. Paul is running for, and it, he knows that he will be fulfilled here because he's running for eternity. All right. And I just want to do a couple th sets on this word eternity before I, I really get going on this one. As, as Christians, we know the soul is eternal, and so that our soul is meant to last forever. Forever. And as eternal beings, we, we have this goal to get to heaven. We have this hunger for eternity, right? And this hunger, like, if we're hungry for food, it means there's food that fills our stomachs, right? But if we're hungry for eternity, like if we know like that our Super Bowls won't fill us up, but eternity will, then we know that we are meant for eternity. And then there's this great quote uh, that I love because, because it talks about what eternity really is. And, etern and so this quote's from uh, John Eldridge, and he says, eternal life is prim primarily not about duration, like it's not super long, but eternity life is primarily about living life to the limit. 
And so that's, that's what heaven is. It's about life lived, fulfilled, full. Um, it's not just about heaven is this place with clouds that you get to bounce on clouds, you know, or like harps. I, I don't know. Like, I, I don't have any desire to learn how to play the harp. If you do, that's awesome. Um, I don't want to offend anybody here. Um, but yeah, you, you can, um, but, but heaven is living life to the limit. And it's not just a place. It can be lived out here now if we think about living life to the limit, fulfilled life. You know, it's not just some place in the distance future, but because that, because of Christ, that we can live life now. We have been set free to live life now. Um, one of my notes here, uh, it, it's from the great author C.S. Lewis. He wrote the Narnia books and a lot of other great books. And, and he says, aim at heaven and you'll get earth thrown in. Aim at earth and you'll get neither. And I really think that's, that was really a great quote for me to reset my needle, to reset how my life was going, what, reset what I was aiming for. You know, because there's so many different things like, oh, yeah, I want to get promoted at Bush Gardens, or, oh, yeah, I want to go to Harvard or Yale, or I don't, I don't mean to say those ambitions are wrong. Those ambitions are great. But when we're living them fulfilled, when we're living them for something other than ourselves, when we're living them for eternity, when we're living, our goals change. And so it's not just that we want to say, like, those things are bad or that you can't live that way. We want you to live that way. We want you to do all those things. We want you to be great. Um, Pope Benedict XVI says, uh, the world offers you comfort, but you were not made for comfort. You were made for greatness. And so that's what we want for you is that we want this great life that you can reach out and, and grab and start living even now. And so... I think that's about my time, but I just, I also like to put in a, a couple seconds at the end for questions, because I kind of ramble, and I, I'm always worried that I said something confusing, so I hope I didn't, but uh, any questions before we send you to your prayer partners? Um, all right, let's go, let's go ahead and close in prayer, and, and I just want to tie in a little bit of reflection into this. All right. My God, thank you uh, for this day. Thank you for creating us. Thank you for calling us into relationship with you. Thank you for all the gifts that you've given us. Thank you for this time where we can reflect on you. Uh, thank you for calling us closer to you. Thank you uh, for guiding us. Lord, sometimes uh, we drift far away from you. We don't know really what we're doing. We ask that you call and you give a purpose to our life, that you uh, call us to a fulfilled life, a life uh, for you. Lord, we ask that if we're running a race that doesn't matter, that we call, that we, cha we change that race, we, we change our path to follow you. Lord, we ask that you call us closer to you. Lord God, we know that you, you desire a relationship with us more than we can desire it for ourselves. Lord God, we ask that you call us into a relationship that you send your spirit to draw us closer to you. Amen. <laughs>